Welcome back to the charismatic voice. I love using music to set the mood for a day. And I have multiple playlists that are simply called happy. And I use those to get myself really energized or dance to with my nine month old son. And at the top of these playlists is ELO. However, I need more ELO songs to fill them out. So I am back to listen to a love song. Let's get to it. I think it's partly the upbeat feeling. I think that comes from the sense, definitely from just a really cool rhythm that's fairly up tempo. But also, I think it's the really delightful harmonies. I love these harmonies. I love the way they slide around sometimes, the way they're playing in these upper falsetto registers. They're just, they're really, really lovely. And even though I feel like the lyrics to this are a little more somber, like more somber than Mr. Blue Sky. I still feel so energized and upbeat from it already. Okay, we're gonna go back. I like the fade in. Feels like a spaceship. Really opens up very well. Like the more, <laughs> they're, they're all sliding together in these really cool harmonies. And oh, I don't know, it feels, it feels like people are enjoying singing together and playing with their voices together. Oh, that was cool. The way we had in the backing vocals, one sliding and another one being total, actually couple, being totally clean with the pitch. I think that was in the middle turning there. Oh, that's cool. Nice layering. And then they're harmonized, which makes lots of high notes up there. <sighs> of the of nice to pass. <laughs> The way the texture changed there, and he went down in, in his voice, and it just felt a lot more like a little soul searching, a little more any inward facing, and somehow more sincere in the way that those emotions might be um, bubbling inside. When you are gone. The sawtooth wave. We definitely have less going on in general within the texture behind as well. Ah! The way he goes up, Jeff it's going up into this when you come in home it's so easy sounding and i believe he's negotiating some vocal weight in there and reducing it as he goes up to the top which is uh, definitely takes some coordination it's beautifully done lovely 
the way they did the same thing on burning that they did on turning before really really hearkening back to that i am so geeking out like i'm having bursts of excitement and giddiness by the way that we have so many layers and so many slides around in the backing vocals i just love the backing vocals and i don't know if i should even call them backing vocals necessarily you have sort of a main line and then there's a cluster of vocals because there's not really a particular lead that's standing out. Instead, you have a whole bunch of layers of harmonies that are all there together and produced in the same way. Oh, that sounds operatic. Mm. I love the hard robber there. <laughs> oh. I like the in my blue world and also out of the blue. Those two things sort of call back to each other. <sighs> The slides in it just keep getting me in the backing. It was there's one in from here to everywhere they go. It all sounds like they're taking off. <laughs> it's actually it's shifting in harmonies as it's moving, and then like sort of it feels like it's like stitching the harmonies in between with these slides. <laughs> to your orchestra in this setting. I just love it. You have these major synth sounds that are just plugging along, right? We have a, they're helping to keep a very running kind of rhythm going as well. There's a lot of bounce in a lot of the synth sounds too. So there's some sawtooth sounds, some aggressive, but still perky sounds in there too, right? And then you have these beautiful orchestral strings that just came in. It's like they're echoing something. There's actually a call and response from the string section and his voice. Oh, nice. So a lot of times in opera or in films and in, in stuff that's using a classical string section like that, we'll think about the strings being sort of like the flow of emotion often like with stuff that's particularly romantic, for example, would tend to be very heavy in the strings and it can represent sort of pleas from the heart. Right? So it, that, that would represent it in a way that a flute might not, for example. Um, brass can have a lot more heroic themes, sort of like bombastic ideas, whereas romantic, heart-filled uh, ideas will often be in the string section. So it's interesting to hear this in this call and response here and this turn to stone and the way it's, it feels like it's really drawing in and having this sweet moment. Okay. Didn't expect that. <laughs> Gonna go back for that one one more time. Just, there's 
elements of this that feels so much like Bohemian Rhapsody to me. I love the way it evolves and switches in unexpected ways. Ah! The enunciation too is hard when it's that fast. That kind of patter also I think harkens back to Gilbert and Sullivan, right? Like I am the very model of a modern major general that's just very m -m 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 difficult to sing through too. I love the, the boom from that percussion. The way it otherwise feels empty underneath. Whoa, <laughs> trying to speak and listen at the same time. Wasn't working there. It, the way the percussion booms in there, we lose a lot of the higher end of the percussion. So we don't have like hi-hats going at this point. Um, and it basically empties out except for this pattern. There's a few other things going on in there, but that allows the pattern to take all of our attention. We don't need to have it drawn away by other instruments at that moment. There's just a lot going on with those voices suddenly moving a lot faster. That reverb is intense. Yeah, the bass in there too. kind of a sad song over overall, right? Like the person's turning to stone, they're heartbroken essentially because somebody's gone. But I like that it wraps here with, you will return again someday to my blue world. And the world's all blue because heartbroken, maybe. So like, even though, even though it sounds a little sad if you're just listening to the lyrics, I think the upbeat feeling overall and then that line makes you know, like, there is hope. Let's hold out for hope. Hmm. I think they added an extra layer in his voice in this part. They've changed this a little bit every time that it's come back to this section. Oh, that's so funny. I hadn't noticed before. There's like a sort of icicle-y kind of sound in one of the synths. It's kind of doing a little shimmer that feels cold and blue, perhaps. There it is. Oh, not there. They're shivery. Shiver. Shiver. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I love that. That sweeping run of strings that's... It almost functions like a, a drum fill would function that it revs us up and energizes us to go into the next section. Ooh, nice syncopation. Ooh, I have, yeah, it's going towards the end of the song. They're so interesting about how they end songs that I've heard so far. This one, again, feels like it's morphing into a different place. Like, I feel like I'm going with them somewhere new at the end of the song, which is really cool. It's not just saying we're done. It's like, where do you want to go next? Oh, 
Oh! Whoa, lots of dissidents there! <sighs> oh, it's so dissonant for an ending! My goodness, that was so dissonant at the end. I I really wonder what's gonna come after this on the album. I really, really like this album. I think I'm probably gonna just let loose and listen to the whole album on my own really soon. I might do one more song from it. I might be able to resist that long. So let me know what your favorite song is in the comments down below because I just need to go through the whole thing here really soon. So uh, plug that down below. If you wanna see some more Electric Light Orchestra analysis, you can check out those over here and may you fall more in love with music every day.